Scott, I said it's over. You're just too immature for me. He gave me a quizzing look, then said, Huh? What? Babe, we're great together. I rolled my eyes. I just figured I don't need to be with someone with such a childish mentality. I need someone mature and... Whatever, Linda. Find me when you change your mind, he grunted. Then he put his earphones in and walked off. Well, at 15, I needed a guy with a certain maturity, not some loser who still found fart jokes funny. Please. My friends, Patty and Louise, agreed with me. I'm far too popular, pretty, and confident to date just anyone. Anyway, as luck should happen, I was walking along the school corridor when I saw this lost-looking but amazingly handsome guy. Flicking out my hair, I approached him with my friendliest voice. Hey, are you okay? Flustered, he replied, Yes, um, which way is it to the principal's office? I'm going that way anyway, so I'll show you. This was a blatant lie, as my class was in the other direction, but he didn't know that. Later that day, I walked into physics class with Lewis and stopped dead. Standing at the front of the class was that handsome guy. It turns out he was the substitute teacher, and written on the board behind him was the name Mr. Halton. My first name is Colin, by the way, he smiled. I whispered to Lewis, seems like science class has heated up. Then I walked over to my seat. There's no way I could concentrate on the density of materials, Not with the hottest teacher ever sharing the same airspace as me. I needed to find a way to get to know him and show him that I wasn't like the other girls my age. Instead, I was far more mature and self-assured than them. So, at the end of class, I walked over and asked him if he'd go over a few things with me. He gladly agreed, so I got to sit down next to him and daydreamed in the scent of his musky cologne. Physics class became my favorite. With my head in my hands, I watched him address the class. He saw me looking at him a few times, but he always quickly looked away. It's okay. I got it. He was just trying to look professional. Then, one time, he asked the question, According to Einstein, is light a partial or a wave? I stuck my hand in the air and grinned. He looked a little flustered. Linda? I puckered my lips and looked straight at him. That shirt color really suits you, sir. It brings out your eyes. Some of the other kids in class laughed, and he awkwardly fiddled with his collar. So cute. Then he coughed and said, (coughs) Linda, do you know the answer? Oh, what was the question again? I stared dreamily at him. Honestly, I couldn't remember anything afterwards but his charmingly severe look. Then one afternoon... Colin asked me to stay behind after class. Result, he must have fallen for this Linda's irresistible charms, didn't he? I shyly stood before him, and in a serious tone, he said, Linda, is everything okay with you? You seem off lately. No, sorry, it's awful. I glumly looked down at my feet and took a few seconds to continue. My family is so poor and my home life is just horrible. I only have nice things because my friends lend me stuff. His gaze softened. I pretended to dab at my fake tears. Please, don't tell anyone. I couldn't cope with the shame. It's enough just having you to talk to. I smiled at him. Yeah, sure. He looked at me gently and said, Anytime. Oh my. His eyes were so big and blue and mmm. I could drown in them. He obviously liked me, too. He just couldn't do anything about it yet, as he was nervous, with him being my teacher and all. But soon he'd realize that me and him were so meant to be, like Ariana Grande and Dalton Gomez. I continued to stay behind after classes so I could talk to Colin about my make-believe terrible home life. He always listened and told me it'd be okay. He was so sweet and sensitive. Then one time, I left Colin's classroom to find Scott there, waiting for me. Ugh. I told him to go away and started walking, but he followed me. So what? You're into old men now? What? I glared at him. Yeah, I'm not stupid. I know you like Mr. Halton. You need to snap out of that dreamland and see he's on a different level to you. Angered by this, I looked him square in the eye and snidely replied, No, Scott, you're the one on a different level to me. 
about 50 levels down, to be precise. I gave the thumbs down sign. He looked wounded as he turned his back to me and started walking off. He had it coming. I walked outside to see Scott lingering around, talking to Patty and Lewis. They didn't see me, so I overheard Scott say, She can't see how tragic she's being. You know her. She's so stubborn. Of course, Mr. Halton doesn't like her in that way. Ahem. I faked a cough, and they all turned to look at me. I put my hand on my hip and stared them down. Look, I'm sorry, Linda. We're just worried about you. Yeah, this fantasy of yours will hurt you. Ugh, what did they know? I rolled my eyes. For your information, Colin and I are really dating. In fact, he's taking me out tonight, so I can't hang out. I walked off the other way, knowing full well that the looks on their face would be priceless. I know Colin wasn't actually my boyfriend, yet, but I knew it would happen soon. It was written in the stars. The next day, as I walked into school, I noticed some of the other kids whispering to each other and pointing at me. Okay, weird. Maybe it was my new dress or something. I bought it because it was an exact colored match to Colin's eyes. But things got weirder in physics class, because as soon as Colin walked in, everybody started giggling. Colin looked confused and said, Okay, what's so funny? Then this girl, Sally, shyly muttered out, Sir, we heard you have a new girlfriend. He raised an eyebrow. Yes, that's correct. How do you know? He gave a nervous laugh. Actually, this shirt is a gift from her. I felt the entire class's eyes turn to me. Well, except for Collins. I tried to keep my cool, but inside I was fuming. How dare some other woman steal my man and force him to wear that hideous shirt? I knew I needed to keep up the lie, so after class, I walked over to Lewis and Patty and said, How cute does Cullen look in that shirt? They both frowned at me. Then Patty replied, So, you really are dating him? Yep, I gave a nod. Right. She gave a skeptical look. They all needed to realize that Colin and I were the real deal. So I bought a box of candy and cut out a heart-shaped tag saying, Love you, honey, with my candy floss scented gel pen. I did feel kind of nervous as I walked over to him, but our love was meant to be. Hi, Linda. Can I help you? I got you this. I placed the gift down on his desk. He read the note and his face fell. Then, in a firm voice, he said, Look, Linda, this is wrong. No, I shook my head. I know you like me. Linda, please, you're my student. You're just a child. No, we're meant to be together. You love me. I know you do. I don't, he said sternly. Now please leave. He rejected me? This had to be down to his new girlfriend. She was obviously poisoning his mind, as there was no way he couldn't like me. I wasn't leaving the room until he admitted he loved me too. So, crying, I sat down on the floor and folded my arms. Right at that moment, Patty and Louise rushed into the room and helped me up. Then they stared daggers at Colin as they led me out into the corridor. Turned out they'd followed me and observed through the window. How embarrassing. Thinking quick, I blubbered out, He's such a jerk. I devoted all of myself to him, but he's bored of me now, so he dumped me. Just like that. My friends comforted me as they told me he wouldn't get away with it. There's no way I could face Colin again just yet. So, I feigned being sick and stayed home. Only when I returned to school, he wasn't there. Then, the principal called me to their office. I walked in to see both my parents sitting there with devastated looks on their faces. Oh no, what was going on? Sweetie, we're sorry for not protecting you more. Mom looked over at me with glassy eyes. Then the principal said, Mr. Halton has been fired, and the police are investigating him. Rest assured, nothing like this will happen again. Huh? Colin had been fired? Why? Then the reality hit me. It was because they thought he'd been having a relationship with me. I muttered out, No, you've got it all wrong. Nothing happened. Linda, I know this is difficult, but he's a bad man. It didn't matter what I said. They remained convinced that I was so manipulated by Colin that I'd say anything to clear his name. Straight after the meeting, I found Patty and Louise, and they confessed that they hated seeing me so upset, so they'd told the principal about me and Colin. I took a deep breath, then I blurted out, but I made it up, all of it. Of course, they were super angry with me for lying, but after bearing their tantrums for some 30 minutes, they agreed to help me clear his name. So they went to the cop station with me, 
and we told them everything. It worked, as Colin had his name cleared, but unsurprisingly, he never came back to teach at my school. The three of us were suspended from school, and my parents grounded me for a month. Patty and Louise are still my friends, but I can see they don't trust me anymore. Anytime I tell them anything, they give each other these yeah-right looks. I feel so guilty for everything I did. It was never meant to go that far, but I now realize that my childish behavior almost cost a good man his future. I wish I could apologize to Colin in person, but I know I'll never get a chance to. Please be careful with your words, as they could ruin someone's career, life, everything. If, like me, you adore your teacher, then please just respect them, be nice, and let them be. Oh, Jess, can we please take a break? Hmm. Fifteen minutes, okay? I'll go grab some Oreos. Our, Our favorite. favorite! Ugh. I hate chemistry. And it doesn't like me, either. The only thing I know is that cafe has two chemical elements in it. Calcium and iron. <laughs> My parents are freaking out that I'll fail it. I don't know why. I mean, it's not like I want to be a scientist or anything. Anyway, they asked Jessie to tutor me. Currently, my grade's still lingering around the F mark, but there's no way I'm finding a new tutor. Why, you ask? Well, because Jess and I are the perfect match. We're both addicted to online shopping and love to read about the latest scandals to hit social media, and that quickly turned us into best friends. And this is my ABCDEFGH boyfriend, Bryce, which means attractive, brilliant, cute, darling, elegant, funny, gorgeous, and hot. I love him. So you're probably wondering how I met such an awesome college boy? Well, it's all thanks to Jess, really. As turns out, she's one heck of a wing woman. So one time during the break, Jess was looking up her college forums when I spotted Bryce in one post. Wow, that's a hottie! You know him, Jess? I pointed at the post. She then replied, He's so your type, right? That's Bryce. I heard he's still single. Go for it. I'll get your back. Oh, that sounds interesting. I grinned back. After that, Jessie went into full-on detective mode. After only 10 minutes, she'd found what block he lived on, what he's majoring in, and even the name of his pet dog. And since then, she instructed me on how to text, reply to, and flirt with him. Cool, calm, and collected. It worked a treat, as by the end of the week, he'd asked me out on a date, and now he's my dreamy BF. He might look like the bad boy type, but underneath it all, he's sweet and shy, just like Edward Cullen. Aww. And guess what? We've been together for two months, and, um, we haven't kissed yet. But, so, how's it going with you and that hot college boy of yours? <sighs> I don't know. It's just recently, I feel like he's being cold with me. Just, I know he's read my messages, but he still takes ages to reply. And he never texts me goodnight anymore. Not like before. I'm trying. I mean... He seems happy with the pair of Jordan 4s and the new phone I bought him, but <sighs> I'm not sure if he wants to be with me anymore. Of course he does, girl. You're a catch. He's probably just busy with his studies. I'm afraid he's cheating on me. You know, there's this Sally girl in Bryce's class. I often see that chick following him around, acting all friendly and making excuses to ask him to do stuff for her. Ugh. Don't be silly. I bet they're just friends. This girl needed to watch out, as I wasn't going to let her just waltz in and steal my man. I slammed on the table. Seeing how frazzled I was, Jessie made a suggestion. We would take it in turns to follow Bryce wherever he went and find out exactly what he was up to. A few days later, I overheard Bryce on his phone talking about his study group at his house. Annoying Sally would be there too, of course. So, being the bright spark I am, I paid the pizza delivery guy to attach a micro-microphone inside the pizza to spy on him. But, ugh, 
the only thing I heard was Bryce's hungry stomach. Yuck. Another time, Jesse texted me. Urgent. Saw Bryce in a jewelry shop buying an expensive necklace. Must be for Sally. Sorry. Fuming, I power walked the 20 blocks to his house. But his mom answered the door and proudly showed off the sparkly necklace Bryce had bought her for her birthday. Oops. Then, on one of my days to follow him, I decided to go in disguise. Um, the problem being, it was 28 degrees, so my choice of Sherlock Holmes outfit and fake beard wasn't the best idea. I'd just followed him into a grocery store when the world began to black out, and I tumbled straight into a display of cans. The last thing I saw was a group of people leaning over me, including a confused-looking Bryce. Babe, you're awake, but why the freaky costume? I sighed, then replied, I'm sorry, it's just you've been so distant recently. Don't you like me anymore? He chuckled. Maddie, of course. I'm just busy with my graduation thesis. You know, I'm in my final year. Aha! So we were all good! Yay! So the next day, I bought us a set of those seriously cute couples rings from Tiffany & Co. to mark this. Peace was restored. At least for a short time. Lately, whenever we went out on a date, Bryce didn't pay attention to my words anymore and just had his eyes glued to his phone screen. Oof! He even chuckled and had this suspect twinkle in his eyes. So I tried leaning over him to see what was so funny, but I couldn't see a thing, as his screen brightness was lowered to the minimum. What are you doing? I snatched his phone, but... What? Wrong password. I bought him this and set the password as our anniversary. Why won't you let me look at your phone? What are you hiding? Nothing, Mads. I just like my privacy sometimes, that's all. Now, come on, baby boo. I'll get you a chocolate muffin. There's no way I was turning that down. Especially as thinking about it, it's the only thing he'd ever bought for me. But as I nibbled on my muffin and watched him transfixed on his phone, I couldn't shake away the feeling that something was wrong. I couldn't drag Jessie into this mission, as her studies were occupying her attention at the moment. It's okay. I can solo it. And this time, I won't faint. I swear. I did my research and found the perfect spy software. I know. I don't normally condone this sort of behavior, but Bryce was hiding something, and I needed to find out what it was. The software was simple to use. I just had to find a way to install it on Bryce's phone. The app itself could be hidden, leaving me free to read his messages without him ever finding out. Perfect! Mission 1. How to install that software on Bryce's phone in a really short time? This is not an easy task, as Bryce is so obsessed with his phone, he even sleeps with it. On a few occasions, he does move away from it, but it's for a few minutes max, meaning I needed to move fast. It took me a whole day of practicing to beat the three-minute mark. I tried it over and over on four different phones and at different times of the day to make sure it'd work under any circumstance. By the end of it, I couldn't bend my fingers. Ouch! Mission one, done. Successfully trained even under time pressure. Mission number two, detect his passcode. I didn't know what his dumb passcode was only that it certainly wasn't our anniversary. We went to the cafe, and as usual, he was stuck on his phone. So I held up mine, pretended to be playing games, but actually turned on the camera, and started recording so I could track the position of his fingers later when typing the passcode. It took hours. Literally. Bryce eventually gave his phone a break to order some snacks. So after that, he had to unlock his phone again. Oof. Finally, after an hour-long video, I've gotten the footage I needed. Okay, Detective Maddie, ready, set, go. I rewatched the video and started analyzing it as soon as I got home. I stared at the screen with my eyes, following Bryce's hand movements. He could be fast, but honey, your girl is already a step ahead. It didn't take long till I figured out the digits. Easy peasy. <laughs> Mission 3. Action. 
what better way than a lovely picnic to complete my quest? And as expected, Bryce just sat there, phone in hand, the whole time. Ugh. I wasn't even sure on how I could carry out this task anymore, but I told myself that the time would surely come. After a few hours, he was bored to death, and without even looking at me, he grumbled, Babe, let's just go home. I immediately shouted out, No! Not until I... Uh, I mean, it's so nice out here. I want to stay a little longer. You just... take a nap. Fine. Wake me up when you're ready. I waited patiently for him to fall asleep. He was making these light snore sounds. Ugh, cute. I was so nervous. I bit down on my bottom lip as I gently pulled his phone out of his pocket. Then I turned my back to him and typed in the passcode with my shaky hands. And I was in! Yeah! I was so happy that I almost forgot and screamed. I did it all in record time. But he suddenly turned around! What you doing, Maddie? Can we go home now? He yawned. O-M-G. My heart stopped. Uh, oh, just a few more minutes. I'm editing the cute pics we took. Well, hurry up. Phew, that was a close one. I grabbed my phone to check if it worked, then... I turned on the silent mode ASAP, but it still woke him up the second time. As much as I wanted to snoop through his messages, I knew they'd have to wait. So we went home. Ugh! Talk about girl message overload. There were dozens. All of them craftily saved under names such as Monitor and Professor. He'd even used my pickup line on some of them. Are you made of copper and tellarium? Because you're cute. Ew! Then I suddenly spotted a familiar face. Jessie? What? My bestie was secretly dating my BF? My heart sunk. This sucked. It didn't make any sense. If Jessie liked Bryce from the start, then why had she encouraged me to flirt with him? Jeez, the messages between them went way back. Then I saw one that broke my heart all over again. Maddie's family is loaded. Baby, let's pretend to be her BF, and she'll buy you whatever you want. Just... Don't take it further. So that explained his shyness. Why he hardly looked at me, and why after two months of dating he hadn't tried to kiss me. Then, a recent message from Bryce to Jessie caught my eye. She's so boring. I got us enough money now, so gonna dump her next week. How dare they! Only, unbeknownst to Jessie, Bryce had dozens of girls on the go. Actually... He was meeting this girl called Tiffany at the movies tomorrow night. It was time to get revenge. So pretending to be Bryce, I texted all of the girls, including Jessie, to come to the cinema at 8 p.m. tomorrow. I borrowed my dad's baseball cap, wore my oversized sunglasses, and arrived there early, so I didn't miss the show. I even bought some popcorn and a Coke, as I wanted refreshments to watch this blockbuster. <laughs> then, at 8 p.m. sharp, Bryce strolled over, and boom! The girls arrived one by one, figured out what was going on, and started arguing with him and each other. Tiffany threw her popcorn over his head. Hilarious! And another girl called him a jerk and whacked him with her handbag, while the others were shouting and pulling his hair. And me? Well, I lurked, in the background, and secretly filmed it all. Oh, sweetheart! You're so dead! Wow, Jessie, our main character, has appeared. She took one look at the circus going on in front of her and instantly looked like a lion ready to pounce. She stormed up to Bryce, pinched his ears, and dragged him while in a high-pitched voice he said, Ouch! Ouch, Jess! It's you who taught me all of this! I'll call you later, babes! When these two almost passed me, I pulled off the cap and shades and jumped out at them. Voila! Could someone come and help me pick up their jaws from the floor? Ha! <laughs> Couldn't expect Maddie the mastermind, huh? I didn't stick around for their explanations. Instead, I shimmied off. But I did send her a little souvenir. Hmm. Jessie is my best friend, so I have to share anything interesting with her. Right? Have a good night, my bestie. 
and my ABCDEFGH boyfriend, you too. But let me add the IJK. I'm just kidding. Yeah, as for me, I've decided to give my heart a break for a while, as this has taught me a priceless lesson. Don't be smitten with handsome boys. Oh, and be wary of sneaky so-called besties. All roads were blocked by snow. No one in their right mind would go outside in this weather. But that banging on the door still persisted and was only getting louder and louder. Could it be... Yeti? I hugged my blanket and willed it to stop. But of course it didn't. I couldn't sleep in this frantic noise either, so... Yeti or no Yeti, I needed to go check it out. So I crept over to the door. A rush of panic swam through me, as with a shaking hand I slightly opened it. Huh? Trevor? Yep, it wasn't any snowy monster. It was Trevor, about to faint from the cold, but his hands were still holding tightly onto something. Trembling, he said, Here you go. Put on some more clothes. You'll catch a cold. Then he passed me my suitcase. Oh, God, you're crazy, Trevor. You are the one who's catching all the cold right now. I immediately sat him down on the couch and placed the blanket around him, then quickly opened my suitcase. Here they are, my secret weapon. Heat packs. I gave him some and got him another coat that wasn't covered in snow. Here, drink this first. I'll go make you a cup of cocoa. I began pouring him a cup of warm water out of my thermal bottle, but he stopped me. P -p Power! Uh, out! He shivered out. Well, that explained why it felt like a freezer in here. And no more hot cocoa then. Hey, so I'm Autumn, and this is part two of my story. If you haven't seen part one, you should go and check it out. Don't be fooled by my name. It was definitely winter here in Texas, and this storm was insane. Shame I was stuck in a holiday cottage with my treacherous best friend Lillian, her lying twin Seth, and his secret girlfriend Charlie. Ugh! Turns out, Lillian just wanted my Chicago clothes, and everyone, besides Trevor, was in on it. Back to Trevor, and I didn't want his death on my watch, so I rubbed his arms in a bid to defreeze him. When he looked like he'd thawed out a little, I raised an eyebrow and asked him, Why did you go outside in this? Um, well, the power went out. I knew it'd be Antarctica for you in here without a heater, so I wanted to go get you the suitcase. But I ended up locked out, so I had no choice but to wake you up to get in. I'm sorry. What are you sorry about? It was just a little dumb of you. <laughs> After that, we chatted about stuff. To be honest, I was super touched by what he did. While everyone was still deep asleep, here he was, thinking about me and risking his life to help me. Okay, so maybe I was a little harsh to him earlier when he confessed that he liked me. But hey, that could still just be him trolling me. I mean, I have a valid reason not to trust anyone under this roof anymore. I guess I must have fallen asleep as, the next morning, I woke up to Lillian frantically shaking me. Hey! Wake up! We're in big trouble! Oh, so they'd finally noticed the power was out. I passed everyone jackets and heat packs from my suitcase. Look guys, layering up in these conditions is vital. Then I looked at Seth and Trevor. Even if that does mean wearing my pink pom-pom hat and squeezing into my rainbow padded coat. We couldn't help but burst out laughing. At least there's something fun to brighten up the situation. Then we started prepping to face this apocalypse. And I was the captain. Because, hey, I'm the one who had the most experience with snow around here. Time was of the essence, so I quickly went to check the faucet. Luckily, the water was still running, though the flow was a little weak. Quick, get anything that can contain water. We should store as much as we can before the pipes freeze up. 
Ugh, look at Seth and Charlie. Being all playful and flirty. Forming a bucket brigade with Lillian, too. What a thorn in the eyes. So I threw them some towels I'd found and ordered them to go windproof all the doors and windows instead, as Trevor could handle this water storage thing alone. Meanwhile, I checked on our food situation. Fortunately, we've brought enough for two days, but it's all frozen now, and we had to ration the food in moderation, as who knows how long this lockdown could be. Hey, should we try using that fireplace? It's f f freezing even with these jackets on. Yeah, Seth, why don't you figure it out? Then we started cleaning up all the stuff in front of the fireplace, so Seth could give it a try. But oh boy, what did I expect? The most he managed to make was black smoke. <laughs> Forget it. This is probably just a decorative fireplace. Y'all so dumb. Then Trevor appeared out of the basement with an armful of wood. No, for sure it's usable. Look, I even found wood and coal stored here. Let me try. He knelt down in front of the fireplace and started clearing the blockage to the chimney. After some time, it worked. Whoa, we had fire. We all whooped and jumped about like lunatics. Then Lillian wrapped her arms around Trevor's neck and kissed him on the cheek. Blushing, he immediately wiped it off with his hand which then left some coal stains on his face. It was so funny. Trevor was our true hero again. While Seth... <sighs> well, thank God I didn't have a crush on that loser anymore. Poor Charlie. Have fun being stuck with that useless dude. Thanks to Trevor, we now had a fire to keep warm and to cook our food on. So we'd be fine, right? Oh no! My phone's dead! Just when I think I caught a tiny bit of signal. Gimme, gimme. Don't you know we can charge your phone with fruits? Seth grabbed Lillian's phone and charger and took them into the kitchen. Now that's strange. He has never looked so enthusiastic doing anything helpful during the past two days. He was probably trying to save his face after losing to Trevor so many times. Ha! <laughs> I watched on with amusement as Seth stabbed the charger into a... Banana. What did I ever see in this guy again? Trevor burst out laughing, and Charlie sighed, then went off to prepare soup for dinner. Lillian folded her arms and pouted. So? Hurry up! Seth grunted, then fiercely stabbed the charger into the poor banana several more times. Jeez, it was so dumb and too funny to stop him. Spare it! It won't work! Ugh! You ruined my charger and wasted our food. I wish I could just throw you out into the storm. Seth shoved the mashed banana into his mouth. Who told you it's wasted? This is my dinner. Then he sulked off into the corner and covered himself with a blanket. Hilarious. Hey, don't worry. I have a power bank in my room. I'll go get it. Oh, sweet. You're indeed my knight in shining armor. Always come and save me in time. She winked, then hugged his arms. He quickly looked at me, then shook her off of him. What was that for? Was he serious when he said he liked me? He rejected Lillian more than twice. And to be honest, I did have this tingling feeling whenever there were only two of us in the room. I don't know anymore. Later that night, we decided to all gather in front of the fireplace to sleep as it's the only warm place in the house. So me and the other girls went to the bedrooms to get the mattresses and blankets. Well, anything useful, really. OMG, my brother's such a loser. Lillian laughed as she picked up her pillow. Charlie smirked. Tell me about it. He actually stabbed a banana to death. The poor banana. I chuckled. Joking around with them actually felt kind of good. We were stuck in this house together till God knows when, so maybe I should stop being bitter towards them. Besides, I was totally over that useless loser Seth now anyway. Even Charlie wasn't on his side. <laughs> we set up a cozy base in the living room and spent the next few days riding out the storm. On a few occasions, Lillian tried snuggling up to Trevor with some excuse about raising body heat, 
but he just shuffled away from her. So in the end, she made us all do cardio workouts, which did the trick. And it was really funny to watch each other struggle to do star jumps with 500 layers of clothes on. Charlie also taught us to play some card games to pass the time, such as Solitaire and Go Fish, which I'm now a pro at. Seth and Trevor even picked up a new hobby of wood carving. But so far, I still couldn't tell what their artworks were supposed to be yet. <laughs> and finally, after four days of isolation, the storm seemed to weaken. We started to get stable phone signal back, and we called our parents right away to update them on the situation. They said they would come pick us up as soon as possible. We were all so happy, and also proud of ourselves. We'd survived this crazy storm! So, you're probably thinking this is the happy ending? Um, not so fast. When we were all FaceTiming Lillian and Seth's parents, their mom suddenly said to Charlie, Thank you so much for helping us keep an eye on the kids. We'll definitely add a nice bonus onto your salary this month. We were all stunned. I don't even know if it's for the same reason, but why was Seth's mom paying his girlfriend? Lillian clumsily said goodbye to her mom and ended the call immediately, then tried to clear up the atmosphere with her fake laugh. Y'all know how my mom loves to give her dear nieces and nephews some extra pocket money whenever she sees them. Okay, what are we having for lunch today, guys? Just stop it. I know your secret already. Charlie and Seth are a couple, aren't they? But why is your mom paying her? That's sick. Lillian, Seth, and Charlie all shouted out in unison, What? Lillian gave me a questioning look. Autumn, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm sorry for lying to you, but no, Charlie is not Seth's girlfriend. She's our tutor. Liar? If so, then why did you have to hide it? My parents didn't trust us staying in this place by ourselves, so they asked Charlie to supervise. And come on, we're 16. We don't need a babysitter. That's embarrassing. Yeah, I thought it's just a harmless lie, so I agreed to go along with them. I mean, we still had fun together, right? But who told you we were a couple? I was about to reply, but then Trevor dragged me to another room while saying to the others, she needs to calm down first. Let me take care of this. Now we were alone. I gave him an I'm waiting look. Okay, hear me out first, okay? I nodded, then he sighed and continued. Lillian does like you, and she did actually want to help you get with Seth, but he wasn't interested. So she promised him a month's worth of pocket money to stay here. I didn't really buy it, but let's see what else he's got. Okay then, but that doesn't change the fact that Seth and Charlie had something going on. Duh. That kiss? Actually, that wasn't real. I just dared Seth to do it. Charlie really is just their tutor. What was he talking about? I felt like the room started spinning. Look, I really do like you, Autumn, and I know I should never have lied about stuff, but it was only so you'd give me a chance. Only... Lillian now thinks I like her, and I never meant to give her the wrong impression. How dare he trick me like that? So I screamed at him. I will never, ever like you! Your actions have just made me hate you even more! Thanks to him, I misjudged Lillian, Charlie, and Seth. Although, to be honest, Seth might not have been a liar, but he was still so not my type. Trevor gave me this disheartened look as he stared down at the ground. Then he muttered out a, Sorry. I didn't want to hear any more of his pathetic apologies, so I huffed my way out of there and sat on the freezing porch until my parents finally arrived. After that, things went back to normal. School resumed, Lillian and I are the best of friends, and she now calls me her snowstorm bestie. Aw. As for Trevor... I now avoid him as much as possible. I know he stares over at me at school. I can feel his gaze on me. But as soon as I look in his direction, he quickly turns away. <sighs> um, I guess I do like him, okay? I don't agree with what he did, but I've got to admit, 
It sure takes a witty, imaginative guy to come up with a plan like that on the spot. Okay, fine. I'll give him another chance and see where things go. And if there's ever another snowstorm, well, then I suppose he's a handy guy to have around. <laughs> I'm so excited, as it's my graduation ceremony tomorrow. Eek! And today, I'm on my way to the airport to pick my mom up. I can't wait to see her, but, well, ugh, it's complicated. I grew up in Philly, but I've been studying here in Toronto for the last three years. I'm so grateful to God for letting me be a girl, because, you know, girls' lives are way more colorful than boys' lives are. Clothes, makeup, Shoes, you name it. For girls, it's just so much more fun. I understand I'm probably confusing you. Well, up until the age of 18, I lived life as a boy. Kai. Actually, Kai's my legal name. I grew up with toy trucks, dinosaur wallpaper, and a rocket-shaped playhouse. Then, at two years old, Mom moved into a villa out in the countryside. It was just us and our old maid, Rita. Meanwhile, my father and grandparents stayed in the city and ran the family company together. Back then, all I knew was my family was rich and successful, but I didn't think much about it. Hey, I was just a kid. All I cared about was getting to choose what color tumbler I had my juice in. Mom always said we moved away because of her migraines, which worsened in hectic surroundings. Nonsense. She just wanted to keep me away from the family so they wouldn't figure out I was actually a girl. Crazy, huh? So I must have known I was a girl, right? The thing is, when you're little, you pretty much believe everything your mom tells you. So when she said I was a boy, then I had no reason to think otherwise. Still, I was drawn to girly things like a magpie was to anything shiny. For instance, I tried putting my mom's sparkly hair clips in my short hair, but mom caught me, took them out, and told me they weren't for boys. Another time, when I was at a play date at this boy's house, I peered into his sister's room and saw all of the Barbies and dolls. Mesmerized, I took one and started playing with it, but then I heard him laughing at me, and he teased me that I was a boy and I shouldn't like gross things like dollies. I didn't like being teased, so after that, I tried to keep my liking for girly stuff to myself. I pretended to like action figures, aliens, and cars. But to be honest, I didn't care much for them at all. But the older I got, the harder it was for my mom to keep up the lie. The trickiest part being the school restrooms. To hide the secret, mom told me the bathrooms at school were dirty, and if I used them, I'd end up with scaly green skin. So every day on the break, Rita would come and take me home to go to the toilet. At first, people at school thought this was weird, but then I guess they just put it down to odd things that rich people do. The other boys annoyed me. I didn't want to play football or run around the playground pretending to be a gladiator. Instead, I wanted to hula hoop with the girls and plate the manes of their toy ponies. So I did just that. One time, when I was waiting to get picked up from school, me and my friend were flicking through her girly magazine. Then suddenly, Mom stormed up to me and dragged me out of the girl zone. Then on the ride home, in a serious voice, she said, Kai, boys have to play with boys. It's just the way it is. This sucked, as I didn't want to play with the boys. But I didn't want to upset my mom, so I stopped playing with the girls. From then onward, I mostly just sat by myself and read fairy tales about princesses and mermaids, which I disguised in the covers of boys' books. My mom must have realized how I felt, so she didn't want to risk me being around other girls which is why, at 11, she insisted I went to an all-boys school. That sucked, as I had never really gotten along with other boys, if not to say that I hated them. But then, during lunch on my first day at the new school, this boy called Kevin sat down next to me and passed me half of his candy bar. We became best friends after that, and even built a den together in the nearby woods. Hanging out with him were my happiest days, as in those moments I just felt free. Then one day during a biology class, the teacher passed us sheets with diagrams of boys' bodies. Huh. My body didn't look like that. Was there something wrong with me? Confused, I decided to confide in Kevin about this. He was also a boy, so he could help me, right? 
I held up the sheet and whispered to him, Um, my body is different to this. Before Kevin even had a chance to answer, one of the other boys shouted out, Kai's different from us. Let's go check it out. Then, to my horror, some of them lifted me and started carrying me toward the bathroom. I was screaming at the top of my voice. Luckily, the teacher ran out into the hallway after me and demanded the boys put me down at once. My mom rushed to school ASAP to take me home as she received a call from my teacher about the incident. She tried cheering me up with ice cream, but it didn't work. I was so upset and confused. Mom, why am I different from other boys? She gave a wounded look, sighed, then in a quiet voice said, Before I tell you the truth, I need you to understand that I love you, Kai, and everything I do is to protect you. She hugged me close to her, then continued, I was so desperate for a child, but after years of trying, it felt like it wasn't meant to be. Then I found out that your dad cheated on me with another woman, and she was pregnant with a boy. I stared at Mom with wide eyes, patiently waiting to hear what came next, because so far, nothing made sense. This was hard to bear, but just when I thought my heart would break, well, I fell pregnant with you. You have to understand, your father and grandparents have very old-fashioned mindsets on the company and having a male heir to inherit it. So, even though his mistress ended up having a baby girl, and your father agreed to fund them both only if they moved to Miami, I knew you'd never be respected in your father's eyes, not as a girl. That mistress of his would make sure their daughter came back and got everything over you. I just couldn't let that happen, so I lied to everyone. That you were a boy. I know you're probably angry with me, and I don't blame you. But you can't tell your father the truth. You can't tell anyone the truth. Wow. So, I was a girl? Now everything started to fall into place. This explained a lot. But of course I was furious. I'd been forced to live a lie just to please my mom. It took a few days before I began to calm down and be more understanding. I guess things must have been really hard for her, too. Also, I was kind of relieved I was actually a girl, as deep down I'd always felt a desire to wear pretty dresses and play with dolls. I told Mom this and said I loved being a girl, so she made a compromise with me. I'd continue living as Kai until I was 18, and then I would go and study abroad as the girl I'd always dreamed of being. After that, I moved schools to keep up the secret. It sucked that I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to Kevin— but I was relieved to go to a co-ed school again. Mom said I could hang out with the other girls as long as I kept the secret. Then, when I started high school, things became more complicated. Firstly, my voice was naturally soft, so I had to put on this gruff voice, which would leave me with a sore throat by the end of the day. So I just became one of those kids who didn't say much. I had to spend ages each morning wrapping a bandage around my chest to flatten it, and then I hid beneath baggy t-shirts and sweaters. I also had to do this boy walk. Then there was the bathroom. I swear everyone thought I had bladder problems, as I was the kid who always asked to go to the bathroom mid-class to avoid the other boys. At least there's one good thing out of this was that I didn't have to deal with sweaty P.E., as mom had told the principal that I had a health problem so I could stay out of these risky activities, especially swimming lessons. But the struggles would never stop. I often looked at the girls with their glossy lips and in their cute vest tops with envy. Oh, how I longed to be able to be who I wanted to be. Finally, high school finished, and true to her word, Mom sent me off to a college in Canada. She sorted all of the paperwork out for me. There, I changed my name to Leanna, and I started my new, exciting life as a girl. I love long, shiny mermaid hair, so I started wearing a wig. I watched so many YouTube videos on how to apply makeup, painted my nails, wore pretty outfits, and tried walking in heels. Um, okay, all of these things would take some practice, but it still felt amazing. I was finally free of my old fake life, and I could just be me. But I knew my family couldn't find out the truth, as it could have catastrophic effects for me and my mom. So I still had to dress and act like Kai again whenever I FaceTimed Dad or my grandparents. Ugh. Time sure flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? I couldn't believe I was graduating tomorrow, and I was so grateful that Mom would be here to see it. When I picked her up from the airport, we both hugged and cried, then hugged some more. 
Through sobs, she blurted out, Look at you. You look so... different. Thanks, Mom. I smiled and wiped her tears away. Luckily, Dad's workaholic, so he didn't even ask to come. Phew, as that would have been an awkward situation. As I wheeled Mom's suitcase out of the airport, she said to me, We just need to take some photos of you graduating as Kai to show the rest of the family. I didn't want to be Kai on my special day, but I knew it was something that had to be done. So I forced a smile and said, Sure, Mom, but let's do it where no one else can see us. I don't want my friends thinking I've gone crazy. The graduation ceremony was awesome. It felt so good to be up on that stage collecting my degree as my true self, glossy hair and all. Afterward, I took Mom to my favorite restaurant to continue the celebrations. As I twirled a piece of pasta around my fork, I said to her, It feels so good to live life as a girl. I was thinking, I want to go back to Philadelphia and tell everyone the truth about who I am. My mom's face dropped, and then she said something totally unexpected. Oh no, I'd just covered my childhood friend Kevin in coffee, but I'm currently Liana, so he didn't recognize me, as he only knew me as Kai. Confused? Then you should check out parts one and two first. I frantically apologized to Kevin while looking around for some napkins to soak the coffee up. It's fine, he smiled. I smiled back at him. Yep, he was the same kind, sweet Kevin. Suddenly I heard Diamond's voice. Liana! What have you done? Then she appeared next to Kevin and gently touched his arm. I apologize. She's new. It's okay. It was my fault anyway. I wasn't looking where I was going. That's just typical of you. Always taking the blame. She gave him this starry-eyed look. Oh, so you two already know each other? I thought out loud. Yes, Kevin and I went to college together in Oz. I introduced him to father for this project, as I believe he'll be an asset to it. Now run along and make some fresh coffees. Diamond gave me a stare. As I went off to make coffees, again, I wondered about Diamond. Did she like Kevin? Oh, no. That manipulative girl doesn't deserve such a sweet guy like him. Later that day, we had a meeting where my dad introduced Kevin as the leader of the project. Kevin then thanked him and started talking about his visions for this project. And it was so obvious how all the girls in the room couldn't take their eyes off him, including Diamond. Ugh. The next day after work, I followed Kevin out to the parking lot and shouted his name. When he turned and saw me, he smiled, and I instantly felt warm inside. I have something for you, as, um, an apology for ruining your last one. I passed him a new shirt. Um, I hope I guessed your size right. Thanks, you really didn't have to do this. He looked flattered as he took it from me. Yep, you have the size spot on. Impressive. His comment caused me to smile to myself. Living as a boy for years at least gave me a perk of understanding their sizes. <laughs> I waved him goodbye and started to walk off, but he shouted, Wait, is there any chance I could have your number? You bet. I was blushing so hard by then. And after that, we started messaging each other, and every time my phone buzzed with his name, I found myself doing this gummy smile. Unfortunately, I couldn't stay in my love bubble with Kevin forever. Instead, I had to spend my days being bossed around by Diamond. Ugh. Once, she was ordering me to revise a report I'd already redone twice. Suddenly, Kevin walked over, picked up the report, and said, Oh, this one. You've done a good job with it, Liana. No need to change anything. Diamond looked furious at being undermined, and I couldn't hide my smug look. <laughs> Take that, little Miss Bossy. After she left, I thanked him for helping me out. It's fine. Hey, don't take much notice of Diamond. She's just intent on impressing her father. If she causes you any more problems, just come find me, okay? Oh, what a sweet guy he was. But one afternoon, I walked into the office kitchen to make myself a drink and saw Diamond and Kevin having a serious chat. On seeing me, Diamond said to him, I'm sorry, Kevin. You needed to know the truth. Then she gave me a snooty look as she passed me. Hmm. I wonder what that was about. I was going to ask him, but before I could, he just left without so much as a glance in my direction. Okay, that was weird, but maybe he was just busy, right? That evening, I messaged Kevin and asked him if he wanted to go for a jog in the park. 
He agreed, but when he showed up, he could barely meet my eye. Kevin, what's wrong? He was silent for a moment, then shouted, Why? Why did you lie to me? Diamond told me how you're engaged to Kai. Why did you lead me on? I, um, I, I sputtered out, but he just tutted then walked off. I stood there speechless and wondering how I was going to get out of this mess. If this wasn't bad enough, as I was on my way home, my phone buzzed. It was a message from Diamond. Leave the house and the company by tomorrow, else I'm telling Kai the truth. <laughs> of course, I just ghosted her dumb message, and true to her word, the next day, my Kai phone went off. It was Diamond telling me how Liana was cheating on me. Ugh, it was crystal clear she wasn't going to drop this. Some days later, my father asked me to go to dinner with him. So, he could get to know me better before I married his son. I thought this was sweet of him, so I agreed. Besides, this was a great opportunity to test the water, figuring out if he's ready for the truth yet. We had some small talk over the appetizer. Then suddenly, Dad put down his fork and asked me, How is Kai? It's such a shame to admit, but we've grown distant over the years, and it was all my fault. I know I haven't always been the best father. He trailed off. Kai's good, I replied. Hmm. I guess it was now or never to say what I wanted to. Um, actually, he's really happy in Canada. And, um, well, he has these big dreams of becoming an architect. Oh, I didn't know that. He lowered his head. I just thought he'd want to inherit the company one day. His heart isn't in it. He's so afraid of telling you as he doesn't want to disappoint you. He was silent, and I worried he was going to yell at me, only he didn't. Instead, gave a thoughtful sigh, then replied, Very well. I respect Kai's decision, and I will support him on whichever path he chooses. This was totally unexpected from him. I was so overwhelmed, I left my seat to hug him, and I told him I'd pass the words to Kai. Now I finally knew how much Dad loved Kai, which means he loved me too, right? I just needed to find a good time to tell him the truth. The next day, on my way home from work, I received a frantic phone call from Mom. Turns out, Diamond had told everyone in the family that I'd cheated on Kai. As I was trying to figure out what to do next, Dad messaged my Liana phone and demanded I come home at once. On the way home, I thought about what I was going to say to him. Jeez, this was terrifying. If it went wrong, Mom and I could end up disowned. I knocked on his study, and in a serious tone, he said, Come in. Then on seeing me, he continued, Liana, Diamond seems adamant. You are liaising with Kevin behind my son's back. Please explain yourself. I took a deep breath, then blurted out, The thing is, I'm not cheating on Kai because, well, I... I... I am Kai. Then in Kai's voice, I continued, while I slowly took off my wig. I was never actually a boy. Instead, I'm a girl, but Mom didn't want me losing out to Diamond. So she made me pretend to be a boy. He was so shocked. He leaned back in his chair and almost tumbled backward. I explained to him why Mom and I did what we did. It was such a relief, finally having that weight off my shoulders. I knew Dad needed some time to digest this avalanche of information. So I put my wig back on and went to find Mom. She was pacing her bedroom in anxiety. I've told you to be extra careful around Diamond. Now how are we possibly meant to carry out this plan? Don't worry, Mom. I had found a way to resolve this mess. I comforted her, but didn't let her know that I'd told Dad the truth yet, as that would just make her even more anxious. The next few days, Dad still acted normal, as if nothing had happened. And when I walked into the dining room for dinner, I saw Diamond's face drop. She clearly thought Dad would have chucked me out by now. She slammed her fist on the table and yelled at Dad, Why is she still here? Ignoring her, he asked Grandpa to pass him the gravy. This only angered Diamond further, and she pointed at me and screamed, She cheated on Kai! Kick her out of this house! I put down my cutlery, calmly stood up, and in a confident voice I said, In fact, I am Kai. <laughs> it was worth doing just for everyone's reaction. My mom turned white. Diamond was dumbfounded while my grandparents clung onto the table in shock. After I'd explain it all to them in more detail, Diamond was the first to respond. So you and your mother lied to everyone? This is unacceptable. Get out of this house. Poor mom looked so ashamed. She couldn't meet dad's eye as she mumbled out. 
Don't blame Liana. She was just a child. It's my fault. Then she pulled my arm and whispered to me that we should leave. Diamond sneered. Those liars. You deserve that. Will you please be quiet? Else I advise you to just leave. Dad gave Diamond a stern look. This shocked her, and she sat back down in silence. I've made a lot of mistakes over the years, and because of them I have many regrets. I was selfish and unkind. He looked at Mom. It pains me to know that you felt as though I left you with no choice but to lie to me. I love you, but I know how I treated you was cruel. I was so desperate for a child that I sought comfort in someone else. I know I wasn't there for you when, and Kai, Liana, when you needed me. Now, if you'll let me, I want to make amends. Diamond jumped up to her feet so fast that the whole table wobbled. She screamed out, this is nonsense, and stormed off. So, that sure was eventful. But finally, everyone knew the truth, which meant Mom and I didn't have to lie anymore. And best of all, I never had to pretend to be Kai ever again. The following week, I was roaming around the house when I saw Diamond in her room, packing. I stepped in, and she said, I'll be out of your sight in a blink. Don't worry. I'm leaving for Miami. I knelt next to her. I don't want you to go. After all, we're sisters. She gave me this wide-eyed look. But, but I was horrible to you. You must have been through so much being forced to live as a boy. Yeah, it was hard at times, but it's okay. I can be me now. I smiled. I know I was mean. I'm sorry. I guess I've always felt like an outsider. I know my mom wants me to claim what's rightfully mine, and... I felt so pressured because I'm no match for Kai. Don't worry about it. We've all done things we regret. Besides, Kai's gone, so you can just be you. You're a great businesswoman, although you might need to tone down a notch on the bossiness. I chuckled. Come on, sis. Let's get you unpacked. When we'd finished, I hugged her and said, Oh, as for Kevin, I think we should fairly compete for his heart. She blushed. Oh, no, it's fine. I used to like him, but he just sees me as a friend. Besides, everyone in the company knows it's you he likes. I felt good that we'd sorted things out. Now I just need to fix things with Kevin, and I had the perfect idea. I messaged him, telling me to meet me by the woods, close to his old school. Then I went and waited by the tree we once built a den in. He walked over to me, a confused look on his face. Leanna, how did you know about this spot. He sat down next to me and I said, I used to come here with my best friend when I was a kid. He was such a sweet boy. He never judged me or questioned me. It always pained me that I didn't get to say goodbye to him. I could see Kevin's mind ticking away. That's when I took off my wig, wiped away my makeup, and passed him half of a candy bar and said, it's been a long time coming, but I owe you this. He stared at me, open mouth. You... So, you're Kai, and Liana? I said, yeah, it's me. I'm both. That's why I always felt familiar towards you. This is unbelievable, he continued. Wow. He stared at me through teary eyes. Just, wow. I mean, this is crazy. I was so upset when you left, and, and now, here you are. When he got over the initial shock, I told him about my life and why I pretended to be a boy. Afterward, he hugged me tightly and said, I'm not losing you again, Liana. I love you. It was a normal Monday morning. I was standing by my locker when this Layla girl walked over, leaned against the locker next to mine, and talked to me in this sultry voice. Hi, handsome. Do you have any plans after school? I looked around in confusion. Huh? Was she talking to me? Usually girls like Layla didn't talk to guys like me. I mean, come on, look at her. She's the hottest girl in school. While I'm Felix, <laughs> just your average looking nerdy guy. I awkwardly replied, Oh, hi, uh, I'm just doing my homework after school, bye. Then I left her there dumbfounded. But it didn't end there. At the end of school, she approached me again and asked, Do you want to hang out with me? Followed by a wink. Uh, no thanks, uh, I really have to finish my paper on the French Revolution. Then I walked off. Man, did she really want to hang out with me? <laughs> no way. She must have lost a bet or something. 
Even on the next day, Layla, one more time, made a beeline for me with this scary, determined look on her face while I was chatting with my friends. And in a serious tone, she said, Look, Felix, do you want to be my boyfriend? What? All my friends started to cheer. I was so embarrassed that I shooed them away to get some privacy with Layla. Um, I'm flattered, but no. She scowled at me. Excuse me? Do you realize that I'm Layla Hall, the prettiest and most popular girl in this entire school? Not to mention a member of the cheerleading team? Ugh, cheerleaders are so dramatic. I calmly replied, Sorry, but you're just not my type. She shouted back, What? I'm everybody's type! I just shrugged and left. My god, that was awkward. But at least she got the hint now, right? Well, wrong. Because that's when the trouble just began. Firstly, it was this flood of junk emails and newsletters. Then strange phone calls from the spa nail salon. Asking if I had made appointment for the day, which I obviously didn't. On top of that, there's a fake Facebook account that started spreading unflattering pictures of me around, picking my nose in French class, pulling this weird tongue-out concentration face as I checked over my essay. There was even a slow-mo clip of me chewing like a camel as I enjoyed my burger. Man, I was an ugly eater. While I was scrolling through these pics, Layla jumped out at me with a big smirk on her face. Be my boyfriend, then the pranks will stop. Right, uh, of course it was her. Didn't she have better things to do? I shook my head and said, no thanks. This still beats being with an annoying girl like you. Then a few days later, as I walked into school, I noticed that everyone was giving me dirty looks. Was my shirt inside out or something? Nope. So what was the problem? I asked some of my friends and, geez, Layla told everyone that I kissed her, then ghosted her. She's a real-life Harley Quinn. Hot, but totally crazy. Only a lunatic like the Joker could love her. I'd had enough of her antics. I couldn't let her make me look like the bad guy for something I didn't do. So at lunch, I charged over to her table and yelled in her face. Are you crazy? Why can't you understand that I don't like you? Then I shouted so everyone could hear me. Hey, listen, this rumor about me kissing and ghosting Layla is a total lie. She made it all up because I refused to date her. So please, save your dirty looks for someone else. Thank you. Layla shoved past me and ran out of there. Ugh, okay, maybe I was a little harsh. But you'd brought it on yourself, princess. Then during French class, she was absent, but no one knew where she went. Was it maybe because of me? Nah, probably not. But as I was walking home, I spotted her sitting alone on a swing in the playground. Just go, Felix. This girl only brings trouble, I thought to myself. But oh man, she looked so sad. So the next thing I knew, I was walking over and sat on the swing next to her. I asked, why weren't you in French class? Just leave me alone. Stop pretending you care. Look, I took a deep breath, then continued. I'm sorry for yelling at you in front of the whole school. That, that wasn't cool. But what you did to me wasn't cool either. Shall we call it even? Layla stayed quiet for a bit, but then she nodded and smiled at me. Well, that wasn't so bad, right? So from then onward, everything was fine between us. She even smiled at me in the hallway. Whenever I saw Layla, this warm feeling came over me, and I couldn't stop grinning. Once, I even spent my entire lunch break trapezing around school just so I could catch a glimpse of her face. Oh boy, I think I've fallen for Layla. But why now? I tried to ignore these feelings, hoping they'd eventually go away. But then Valentine's Day came along and Layla, being the popular girl she is, received enough roses to open a florist. Ugh, how annoying. I needed to do something. So after school, I went to her house with some chocolates and a teddy bear. As soon as she opened the door, I blurted out, I know I'm a big dumb idiot. Rejecting you was a huge mistake. Please, will you be my Valentine? I stood there red-faced and prepared for rejection. But she just snatched the gift out of my hands then said, Yeah, okay then. Oh my god, I couldn't believe it. Me, your regular nerdy guy, was dating the most popular girl in school. Love is really unpredictable. I was amazed at how open she was to my nerdy stuff. She even watched The Mandalorian with me and cooed whenever she saw Baby Yoda. But the one thing that didn't gel so well between us was, yep, you guessed it, studying. Layla didn't seem to care about her grades, and I didn't want her to fail, so I offered to be her tutor. But she was constantly yawning and staring out of the window whenever we started studying. Felix, I have an idea. Why don't you do my homework for me? In the meantime, I can go to cheerleading practice as we have an important contest coming up and it means the world to me, just like your math quizzes do to you. What? Was she serious? My God, I hated cheating like this. But she gave me that puppy-eyed look and me being the sucker I am, I agreed. Thanks, Felix. You're the best. She kissed me on the cheek, then immediately passed me a huge pile of homework. 
I asked her why she had so much, and she explained that because she didn't understand it, she let them pile up. But hold on, why did she have Spanish? She was in French class with me, not Spanish. But she just shrugged and said her parents forced her to study it outside of school. Oh, my poor little pumpkin. One day, like usual, I stopped by her place to pick up her homework, but she wasn't home. That was odd. Today wasn't cheerleading practice, so where could she be? I looked through the stack that she asked her mom to give me and saw some Spanish worksheets. So I said to her mom, Oh, she must be in her Spanish lesson, right? Her mom looked a bit confused, then laughed. <laughs> you know Layla. She's far too stubborn to agree to extra classes. Huh? So the papers weren't hers? Then whose it was? And why? Suddenly I felt this uncomfortable feeling itching under my skin. I decided to confront her later at school. Then the next day I was walking through the hallway looking for Layla, when I suddenly heard some guys cheering, something about getting an A in Spanish. Wait a minute, did he say Spanish? I turned to see who it was, and to my shock it was Hector, the captain of the soccer team. Hector was popular for being all handsome and everything, but also for sucking at school. Someone must have done his homework for him, and you guessed it, yeah. This someone was me. Ah, it all made sense now. Layla and Hector must be a couple. They may have been hot stuff, but they both sucked at studying. So she was using me to do both of their homework. It all made much more sense now. None of this relationship was real. It was all just an act. And no way was I letting them get away with this. I had a perfect plan to expose them. During lunch, I sat down at the table closest to Hector. Then I went into lovey-dovey overload with Layla. I fed her cheese fries, then I stroked her hair and loudly told her how soft it was. I quickly glanced over at Hector for his reaction, but nothing. He seemed more interested in her burger than her. Layla raised an eyebrow at me. Um, are you okay? You're acting really weird. I laughed loudly, then placed my arms around her, then said, well, um, it was actually more like shouting. Oh, because you're so cute! But huh? Why was there still no reaction from Hector? He and his friends even cheered, and on his way out of the canteen, he gave me a thumbs up. Layla didn't look phased at all either. Man, somebody call the Academy, because these two deserved an Oscar. My plan was a massive fail. Ugh, this was so frustrating. I fell silent, and Layla noticed and gave me this quizzing look. Something is definitely off. You're being really strange. Okay, if she wanted to know, then fine. So I blurted out. I know that the Spanish papers belong to Hector. You're together and you're just using me to do all your homework. I'm not stupid, you know. Nice meeting you, but please don't ever talk to me again. Then I left without saying a word. Well, that's the end of my story. A rather sad one, right? I would be lying if I said I wasn't feeling down about it. I truly do love her. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to college in a few months and I'll get to meet a cute, geeky girl who won't trick me into doing some other dude's homework. <sighs> oh, uh, sorry guys, someone's calling me. My god, it's Layla. What does she want? We are done. Stop calling. What? Fine. I promise you'll leave me alone after this? Okay, wait. I'm coming downstairs. Uh, oh my god. Layla's at my front door and she insists to not leave unless I have a talk with her. Ugh. Don't move, everyone. I'll tell you every detail as soon as I'm back. Jesus, guys. You won't believe what Layla's just told me. The thing is that her cheerleading team had to practice a lot for upcoming contests, which means they couldn't study as much. Therefore, they had to find someone who was willing to do their homework so their grades wouldn't slip. That's when Layla came up with the plan to win me over as her boyfriend. The flirting, the pranks, <laughs> they were all part of her plan. That was the truth. But Layla didn't know about the Spanish worksheets, because her teammate Harper gave them to her. Turns out Hector is Harper's boyfriend. Didn't see that coming, right? But I was still super mad at Layla, because she still used me. Then Layla took out some papers and showed them to me. Huh? It was homework with all B's on them. Then she told me, okay, I admit that at first I didn't like you. I only approached you to take advantage of you, but then I actually fell for you as I got to know you better, okay? So I stopped giving you my homework and did it on my own. So, her feelings for me were real too? I couldn't believe it. Eventually I forgave her and now we're happier than ever. I must say, when Layla first talked to me, I thought she was this crazy girl like Harley Quinn who I could never like, but I was wrong. Turns out I'm the one who's crazy about her. So, I guess I have more in common with the Joker than I first thought. <laughs> Lisa! Lisa! Wait up! I slowed down, then turned around and smiled at Emily as she hurried to catch up with me. Well, spit it out. What hot tea do you get this time? Lisa, you are not going to believe this. Eden? likes you. 
I raised an eyebrow. Huh? You're kidding, right? No! She furiously shook her head. It's true! Yesterday afternoon, after school, I passed by the basketball court, and I overheard the boys talking about it. Um, I think the likelihood is you heard wrong, my friend. As I continued on my way to school, I couldn't stop thinking about Emily's words. As if Eden Woodson, the most popular boy in the entire school, would like me? Impossible! Um, had we even spoken to each other? Oh yeah, once. In the library, he asked to borrow my pen. <sighs> Not to mention, his last girlfriend, Sarah, was the captain of the cheerleading squad. So, yep, you can already tell how pretty and popular she was. They only split up because she moved away. Well, look at me. Talent? Well, my coordination is zero. Thanks to being short-sighted. Pretty? Nope. And my Coke bottle glasses don't help in this department. The only thing I was okay at was studying, which is why I was assigned the role of class president. Think fast. A cheerleader versus a class president? See? Figured. Throughout the day, Emily wouldn't quit insisting that what she'd heard was correct. Ugh, I know she meant well, but didn't she realize how humiliating this was for me? Even if she did hear Eden say that, he was probably just kidding around. Emily, please stop. I just want to take these tests to Mrs. Pierce's classroom, then go home. But Lisa... I gave her my best, I'm being serious look, so she let out a defeated sigh. Nodded, then walked away from me. Finally, peace at last. I dropped the tests off, then as I was walking back along the corridor, I saw Eden leaning against his locker as he talked to a boy on the basketball team. Hmm. For some reason, curiosity got the best of me, so instead of walking past them, I found myself ducking behind the corner and eavesdropping on their conversation. So, what else are you still waiting for? Talk to her! I really want to, but I don't know. <sighs> <laughs> as if the most popular boy in school is dumbstruck by some girl. Who are they talking about? Could it be... me? No way. Lisa, please wake up and stop being so delusional. Fact, boys like Eden would never lay an eye on girls like you. The next morning at school, I walked into class to see the boys, including Eden, chatting about last night's NBA score or something. Only, Eden wouldn't quit staring at me. Um, did I have something on my face? My eyes met his, and then he immediately turned away and resumed the conversation with his friends like nothing happened. Huh? What did that mean? Then, during chemistry class, I kept sensing this strange feeling coming from behind, so by instinct, I turned around to check, and surprise, surprise, I saw Eden looking at me. But just like earlier, as soon as our gazes met, he stared down at his book. Okay, so that was weird. While I was thinking about his strange behavior, Emily suddenly nudged my arm. See, I told you he likes you. You should tell him you like him, too, before it's too late. <laughs> um, no thanks. But what do you mean by too late? I heard that Sarah, you know, his ex, is coming back. Her parents divorced or something. So what? Come on, Lisa. He likes you. But I don't like him. As soon as I finished talking, I saw the teacher glancing straight at me. Oh no. Busted. He made me stand up in front of everyone and answer a question. But of course, I hadn't been listening. So I just stood there doing this open-mouthed goldfish look then frantically looked around to find some help with the answer. And when I peered over at Eden, oh great, he was grinning at me. This was so embarrassing. That night, I lay in bed and got lost in thoughts about Eden. Okay, so I know I told Emily I didn't like him. It's just that I still didn't believe that someone like him could have a crush on someone like me. Curious, I spent the whole evening stalking Eden's social media account. Not gonna lie, he was indeed really cute. There were loads of pics of him watching basketball matches with his little bro, pulling goofy faces with his friends, 
and spending time with his family at the beach. Um, so there were also a few pics of him with his ex, and I noticed that she'd commented on some of his recent stuff. I really wished I was brave enough to start a conversation with him, or to even ask him if he still kept in touch with his ex-girlfriend. But that would be weird, wouldn't it? But then, guess what? To my utter disbelief, the next morning, my homeroom teacher walked in, and following her was... S- Sarah? Oh no, I should have listened to Emily on this one. Um, so did this mean Eden would get back with her? All day long, Sarah clung onto Eden, so it wasn't long before the rumors started buzzing around school that the dream couple was back together. Not only was this bad enough to deal with, but I also had to put up with Emily's I told you so looks. Whatever, the two of them dating had nothing to do with me, right? They could do what they wanted, and I was just going to carry on with my life. But, jeez, this Sarah girl needed to stop spamming everyone's timeline with all these old photos when she and Eden were still in love. Not to mention the cheesy, cringy captions. Okay, I guess my heart ached a little. <sighs> but anyway, I knew I shouldn't care about them. Only, it soon became pretty obvious that Sarah was bothered by me. Every time she passed me in the corridor, she glanced at me and sneered. Huh? Why the attitude? I barely knew the girl. Then one time, I was heading over to the cafeteria when someone shoved me from behind, causing me to fall face first on the ground. Confused, I quickly fumbled for my glasses. Huh? What was that sound? Then suddenly, I heard Emily scream out. Lisa, you just stepped on your glasses! Oh no, now how was I supposed to live without my glasses? Emily had to guide me back to class, and that day, I could only listen to the lectures, because I couldn't see well enough to take notes. By the end of the day, I was fed up and just wanted to go home. I was about to ask Emily to help me walk home, so I didn't end up getting flattened by a bus or something. But before I could ask her... She packed up at lightning speed, said bye, then hurried out of there. Hayes, how thoughtful was my dear bestie? Great. Guess I would just have to navigate my way home alone somehow. It took me ages just to get from the classroom to the school gate. Then I almost bumped into someone. But fortunately, there was a hand that pulled me back. You okay? Came a familiar voice. Eden? I is that you? I asked. Yeah, I'm here, and I'm not having your death on my conscience, <laughs> so I'm walking you home. He took my hand. Eek! My heart somersaulted. Then he led me to the nearby glasses store so I could buy a new pair. After that, he still insisted on walking me home, though, and on the way, we talked loads, mainly about our families and our love of indie movies. Still, I couldn't help but have Sarah at the back of my mind. I just wanted to ask him about their relationship. But now wasn't the right time. Right? A few days later, during a math test, I felt something hit my back, then fall to the ground. So, I picked it up, but before I could see what it was, the teacher quickly walked over, grabbed it, and opened it. Turns out, it was some of the answers to the test. Oh no! I tried explaining myself, but he told me I would get detention and was not allowed to take the test anymore. What? I couldn't get an F on my math test. It would ruin both my transcript and my college application record. I cried out to him that this wasn't fair, when suddenly, Eden stood up and said, Sir, it was my sheet, not Lisa's. So both of us ended up being banned from taking the test and the teacher believed that because I picked the note up, I was still just as guilty. I didn't think this day could get any worse. Oh, how wrong I was. During recess, I was rearranging my books in my locker when Sarah approached me. Hey, how dare you let Eden take the blame for your actions? As class president, you should be totally ashamed of yourself. What are you talking about? Your innocent routine may fool Eden, but you aren't fooling me. You wait and see, as I still have bigger plans coming for you. Bigger? 
What other plans did you have? Huh? Am I missing something? Um, I mean, stop ruining things between Eden and me, else I won't let it slide next time. Um, what was that about? Why was Sarah blaming me? Jeez, this whole situation was crazy. After school, Eden and I had to stay behind for an extra hour for detention. Luckily, our homeroom teacher knew that neither of us would cheat, as we were both exemplary students. So that punishment was just a warning. Then, on our way out of the classroom, I asked him, I know that paper wasn't yours, so why did you help me? Well, um, I knew it wasn't yours either. I saw Sarah throw it at you. Sarah? Yeah, she was behind breaking her glasses too. She pushed me? But why? It, it was me. I'm sorry. She did that because she knows I like you. What? Did I mishear him? Eden just said that he likes... Me? Lisa, I like you. I have for a long time. Um, do you want to go out with me sometime? There was an awkward pause as I soaked up his words. He really likes... Me? Oh, wow. This was bonkers. I gave this huge smile. Then I nodded at him and spluttered out, Yeah, I'd like that. So, after that, we started dating. But this didn't go too well with Sarah. One afternoon, I was walking across the schoolyard when Sarah appeared and shot me this dirty look, which I ignored. Suddenly, she pushed my shoulder, sneered, and then left. I quickly straightened myself up, then shouted after her, Hey, Sarah! I never got a chance to thank you. Sarah immediately turned around and gave me a puzzled look. You know, for getting Eden and me together. Sincerely, thank you, our matchmaker. Then I smiled and left. I'm pretty sure that she was still standing there at me with fiery eyes. But hey, she pranked me first, right? Oh well, karma. Anyway, I just want to let you all know that if you like someone, then don't put yourself down. Instead, be confident and brave enough to tell them how you feel. Because not everyone is lucky enough to have an expert matchmaker like Sarah around to help. <laughs>
with a five times return expected by the end of the year. Wow, what a huge project. I felt so proud to have such a perfect boyfriend. But then he lowered his voice. Yeah, looks like I'm going to have to bail on it. I widened my eyes and asked, Why? What's up? I need to contribute another 50000 by the end of the week, but I'm still 10000 short. I blurted out, I can help? He shook his head. Babe, I can't expect you to do that. Besides, where would you find that amount of money from at such short notice? I'll borrow it from my friends or something. Don't you believe your girlfriend can do it? I winked at him. He kissed my forehead and then with a huge smile on his face, told me I was the best girlfriend ever. After I counted up my savings and student loan, I was still a few thousand short. So, I told a couple of my friends that my parents had been in an accident and I needed money urgently to pay for their hospital fees. I know lying was lame, but I'd pay them back soon. So what would it matter, right? But then a week after I'd given Austin the money, he showed up at my house looking completely bummed out. He told me he'd met an unexpected problem, and now he needed another $15,000, else he'd lose everything. I wanted to help him, but I had no one left to borrow money from. I thought he'd be understanding, but instead he just said, You can borrow money from a loan shark. Then in a month, we can pay it back. I gave him a confused look and asked him why he didn't get the loan himself. He stroked my hair and in a soothing voice said, I would if I could, Hannah, but you're a student, so your interest rates will be much lower than mine. Hmm, that made sense. Plus, we were going to be together forever anyway. So what did it matter who took the loan out? So that same day, I borrowed the rest of the money from a loan shark and handed it over to Austin. Hannah! A voice shouted, which startled me from my thoughts. Hannah, give me back my money. I need it urgently. My friend Rachel glared at me. I felt so flustered as I blurted out, Soon, a few days, I promise. She rolled her eyes at me. Yeah, whatever. Poof, I thought you had a rich boyfriend, right? Why don't you ask him to help you out? I forced a smile and repeatedly told her I'd pay her back soon. This was so embarrassing, and now my friend hated me. Ugh, it was all that jerk Austin's fault. The truth was that as soon as I handed him the money, well, he disappeared. His online accounts, number, everything. All gone. I even found out that the house he claimed to be his was actually just some Airbnb rental. Oh, and the designer bag he bought me? Fake! The next day, I was walking to my lecture when I heard two girls talking to each other. Hannah owes people loads of money, but won't pay it back. Um, isn't she always boasting about having a boyfriend? I lowered my head and hurried past them. This was so humiliating. I needed to figure out a way of finding that jerk Austin and making him give me my money back. Oh, who could that be? Maybe it was Austin with a perfectly reasonable explanation for everything. I ran to the door and opened it. Oh, it's just some strange girl. Where is Austin? Tell him to come out here now! She yelled. And you are... His victim! He tricked me into giving him all of my savings! She pushed past me and stormed inside. Austin, stop hiding from me and come out! I pulled the girl's arm and asked. Hold up, he also tricked you? She looked at me with wide eyes. Oh gosh, Austin's such a pro scammer. After that, we sat down and she explained everything. Turns out she's called Leah, and Austin scammed her out of $50,000. OMG, that was so much money! Austin is a real jerk! Suddenly, my housemate Sarah and her boyfriend Weston walked in. Hey, look! I won this Tales of Suspense Volume 39 in the horse race bet the other day. You know, it's super rare. Weston was so excited showing Sarah his new precious comic book, while I forced a smile at them both, then quickly dragged Leah up to my room. There's no way I wanted Sarah knowing that I'd been scammed. Entering my room, Leah suddenly said, 
Hey, do you want your money back? I nodded. Of course I do, but now I don't even know where he is. She gave me this sly smile as she told me how Austin adored the Marvel Universe and that comic Weston had could be used to lure him in. So we went downstairs, waited for Sarah to go into the other room, then we asked Weston for his help. At first he refused, but then we offered to split the money with him three ways. Eventually Weston agreed and so, game on! Starting off, Weston posted it on a comic book marketplace for half the price it was worth. Only a hundred and fifty thousand dollars! Unsurprisingly, it wasn't long before that snake Austin slithered into his messages. Great! We arrived at the meeting spot super early and hid behind a bush. Thirty minutes later, and Austin still hadn't shown up, and I had a dead arm. Ouch! I whispered to Leah, do you think our plan was leaked? She grabbed my shoulder and shushed me. Austin had arrived. He took ages to check the book, really carefully. When they finished the exchange, I jumped out of the bush and shouted, Austin, there you are. Where's my money? His eyes widened in terror, and he quickly tried to run off the other way. But Leah jumped out in front of him. She sneered and rolled up her sleeves, stepping towards him. There is nowhere for you to run, jerk. Austin was terrified and stepped back. Then I ran up behind him and snatched the comic out of his hand. Girls, look, I... He turned pale and immediately turned and hurried away. He even lost a shoe en route, but he didn't dare to stop to pick it up. It was so hilarious watching him hobble off. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leah. It felt so good to get revenge. Anytime. We clinked our glasses together. Girl power and all. Ugh, my head hurts so bad. Hmm, where's Leah? I guess she must have gone home. I went over to my closet. Um, where's the backpack with my money in it? I frantically turned my room upside down looking for it. Could it be? I called Leah, but there was no answer. That was it. Leah and Austin were definitely the same. Why did I have to be such a gullible idiot? There was a loud banging on the door, so I opened it. Two huge guys were standing there. Hey, beautiful. Pay us back soon, or else. Then they left. I freaked out, not knowing what to do. Find Leah and Austin? It's futile. I know it. <sighs> so I started working like crazy. I delivered newspapers and milk in the mornings, then waitressed most evenings. I was so exhausted, but I had to find a way to pay off my debt before I drowned in it. Then one morning, Sarah came downstairs to find me asleep, face down on my piece of toast. She gently shook me awake, then told me she'd got me a paid intern job at her uncle's hospital. Yay. Thanks, Sarah. You're the best. The first day at my new job went well, so I decided to reward myself with a bagel and hot chocolate in the canteen. That's when I walked straight past her. Leah! She spotted me, too, and ran off, but I chased her into a dead end. Where's my money? I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry! She sobbed out. Then she told me how the night that we'd been celebrating, she'd received some bad news. Her brother was in an accident and needed emergency surgery. Panicked, she took the money for his hospital bills. Are you tricking me? This is 100% true. She wiped at her tears. Hmm, maybe I felt a little bit sorry for her. But no, what she did wasn't cool. Besides, she could be lying to me. I mean, I did also use the ill relative's excuse to get money off my friends. So I dragged her to reception to check. Turns out she's telling the truth. Her brother is in a coma and the bills are obviously very expensive. What Leah did sucks, but she's all her brother has. So I guess I can kind of understand why she did that. <sighs> so it looks like I've got to continue working my butt off for now. That weekend, I was about to leave for work 
when I opened the door to see those thugs back again. They shoved past me and started picking up valuables. I shouted at them to stop and that I'd get their money to them soon, but they didn't listen to me. Then they picked up Sarah's laptop. Oh no! Right at that moment, Leah showed up and demanded they stop right now. Then she proceeded to pay them what I owed them. Huh? What? How did she have the money? Well, it turns out Leah's brother woke up from his coma. They talked, and she found out his specific research had just won first prize in a nationwide competition. So he gave her the prize money and told her to pay off my debt. I was so ecstatic. I flung my arms around her and kept on saying thank you. Now I was debt free. Phew! I could finally pay my friends back and put all of this behind me. Huh? What was that? We both looked outside. Isn't that Austin? But why does he look so frazzled? Oh, turns out five angry looking girls are chasing after him. <laughs> I looked at Leah. Then we both burst out laughing. And that, guys, is karma.